Aaron, thanks for having a chat with us today. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, we have this great launch, mm -hmm. but also want to uh, deep dive about some of the technical and architecture, what you have done and our team have helped, mm -hmm. but also talk a little bit about the roadmap, why mm -hmm. like putting all the domains on chain are so difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it uh, seems to be a successful launch. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of people interested in the team put in a lot of effort mm -hmm. to make it happen. Yeah, it's really great to have you as our partner, but also mm -hmm. like giving the right uh, technical leadership mm -hmm. on this project. In particular, uh, let's start with something a little bit technical first. Mm -hmm. One of the key achievements that we have do, done is really generating the entire register end-to-end -end SSL certificate within a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've used uh, domains and uh, like all this hosting for many years. It's really, really impressive that we've done it. Can you tell us some of the challenges and solutions that we came, came up together? Yeah, of course. Uh, traditionally, uh, if you buy SSL certificate from uh, those registers, like mm -hmm. GoDaddy or Namecheap, mm -hmm. it, it costs a lot of money, mm -hmm. uh, more than the domain itself. <laughs> yes. And uh, we are giving it away for free. Mm -hmm. uh, it's true that there are open source tools these mm -hmm. days that you can uh, uh, generate SSL certificate yourself and, mm -hmm. uh, and then configure it yourself uh, in the server. Yeah. Uh, and the whole thing is still free, but it really takes a lot of work mm -hmm. and a lot of time to yep. really do it right. And mm -hmm. it's very easy to do it wrong. Yep. So what we are doing here is uh, we, uh, as soon as the domain is um, registered, mm -hmm. um, we have our own DNS servers mm -hmm. to uh, set up the required SSL uh, authentication records mm -hmm. uh, immediately. Yep. So as soon as the global DNS uh, cache is updated, uh, the user should be able to see a certificate being generated mm -hmm. uh, within uh, 30 seconds mm -hmm. for their newly purchased domain. I don't think any register mm -hmm. uh, these days can uh, provide a outcome this quickly. Mm -hmm. And so this is done uh, because we have uh, systems, a lot of system components in the backend, such mm -hmm. as a load balancer mm -hmm. on GCP powered by uh, scalable uh, buckets and mm -hmm. roofs. Uh, we have the certificate being auto auto automatically generated and we have our own DNS servers that yeah. uh, right now um, backed by a uh, Redis mm -hmm. enterprise grade mm -hmm. uh, that's scalable to uh, hundreds of queries or mm -hmm. even more per second. Mm -hmm. Uh, and soon to be replaced by the blockchain itself yeah. to, to provide all these DNS records. So all these systems are working together uh, seamlessly mm -hmm. uh, to provide this kind of user experience in the front end, which all happens uh, invisibly. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really incredible. Like taking an end-to-end -end system design to achieve this kind of performance is really once um, a generation opportunity to design what was in Web1 before and many of the Web2 uh, infrastructure with SSL, in particular uh, e-commerce, if not social network was possible and secure communication was possible. As a matter of fact, uh, the good project called Less Encrypt mm -hmm. is one of my really technical teammates coming from uh, Cornell and work, uh, uh, me work with him together at mm -hmm. Google Maps and be part of the uh, uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation, you have to come up with the project Let's Encrypt. And now finally, there are really this end-to-end -end infrastructure that can be building on Web3. Yeah, yeah, truly. Uh, Let's Encrypt only came out a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I think a lot of people are using it. It's integrated with a bunch of web servers mm -hmm. and uh, operating systems. And it's really difficult for them to uh, reach where they are right now mm -hmm. because a lot of integration has to happen. Mm -hmm. And still, there's still a lot of burden on the user side mm -hmm. to uh, really use it right. Mm -hmm. uh, to this day, I don't think anyone other than a developer mm -hmm. would understand how yeah. it could work. And we're abstract in a way of mm -hmm. that complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, to a level of experience that you uh, buy a domain, uh, uh, SSL is automatically configured for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you just you, you just don't need to worry about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of all to configure in the really fast enough and if not the fastest time possible that we can debug end to end. 
again, many of the register, uh, even uh, cloud hosting providers, they just couldn't guarantee even the time. They always talk about like 30 minutes, sometimes take hours, because the propagation and caching and the hosting become very complicated these days. Right when things uh, was invented, I would say forty years ago, it was a very like robust mechanism. But there are so many layers on top of it. Mm -hmm. Never mind the whole records should it be on chain money. Should it be payment possible mm -hmm. with just tokens? The like the stack is so uh, uh, fragmented now. Mm -hmm. Even a uh, like invention of a tool that let's say encrypt is still not well adopted. Mm -hmm. Never mind to the level that uh, consumers just don't need to think about uh, the technology and the magic even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, these days people expect to uh, be able to set up something within uh, seconds. <laughs> yes. So something uh, that took hours mm -hmm. to uh, to work, just mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it's not going to work <laughs> for a lot of applications. And yeah. by reducing this, uh, the delay mm -hmm. to, say, a level of 30 seconds, I think yeah. soon you might be able to do even less. Mm -hmm. uh, if we optimize some of the stuff, mm -hmm. say less than 10 seconds or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. five or two seconds, mm -hmm. it enables a whole bunch of new applications. Uh, yeah. Like for example, you can generate a website mm -hmm. uh, automatically uh, mm -hmm. on demand. You can yeah. provide a whole bunch of uh, new services on top Absolutely. of it. You can configure your own DNS record mm -hmm. using your crypto wallet. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we could have, we, we, we also have uh, email video services. Mm -hmm. We give you a free email. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, not technically free, mm -hmm. costs a uh, very little amount of money, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a lot faster compared to mm -hmm. uh, the traditional registers like GoDaddy or, or anything else. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's technically also interesting. Mm -hmm. The fact that now we have full control because we own the entire top level domains, mm -hmm. we are not going through like what are possible, but we inventing hopefully on blockchain. Mm -hmm. I think the key that you mentioned that uh, now it's a lot faster. Mm -hmm. we, we, we are, we're going to write a full blog post about like why even SSL generation is not just a simple cryptographic operation. They actually do the like, challenges about worrying about people spamming the servers and because it's a global root server to propagate. So the concept of uh, denial of service mm -hmm. and spamming and control of quality were very different in the web one space because they they at the beginning they only like rely on each other being good, and web two only rely on big company to take care of like, the entire operation and being good. And how hopefully now web three right there are a lot more robust uh, anti spamming mechanism and there are like financial incentives there that uh, not only like technically is faster, but uh, like the organization structure can be a lot more really uh, mm -hmm. to be uh, uh, really reducing all the infrastructure and middleman, but also in incentives on it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, one big problem the blockchain solved mm -hmm. is uh, the cost to trust each other mm -hmm. and, uh, and having each uh, node or each party operate mm -hmm. independently uh, while being able to trust each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, Harmony blockchain in particular made it really mm -hmm. cheap to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the infrastructure cost mm -hmm. in, in the DNS system, which is a fundamental mm -hmm. uh, building pillar of the entire internet, mm -hmm. is um, the operation of registers and mm -hmm. registries and uh, uh, all sorts of rules that you have to comply so that they yeah. uh, behave in a good way mm -hmm. and not stealing people's domain and yeah. misleading people. Yeah. So there's a lot of, uh, there are, uh, it could ha cost hundreds of thousand dollars easily mm -hmm. to operate mm -hmm. a register. Mm -hmm. um, but with this kind of system that we are building, uh, mm -hmm. we could be enabling a lot more people to mm -hmm. operate something mm -hmm. like this. Uh, while at the same time remain fully compliant mm -hmm. with existing rules of the internet that set by ICANN or yep. whoever. Yep. Well, that's why it's great. Yeah. Not only uh, Aaron here love like coding and reading code, but also read lots of these compliance, mm -hmm. if not legal agreements. Mm -hmm. In some way, wherever that is not possible in the code, people need to come up with smart contract to align the interests. But in the worst case, having an actual legal documents, if not rules, mm -hmm. regulation, governance, if not a non-profit uh, group of people to governance this, it become a legacy 
that it's not possible to change. And we're very lucky again, not only owning the top level to iterate with you what is finally possible. What you said about like uh, enabling more use cases, mm -hmm. enabling more integration, so that uh, all these are possible hosting, like to be faster is possible, right? To be even cheaper than GoDaddy possible, but so people are able to manage domains, hosting, mm -hmm. services, integration with traditional internet because it was just never even possible, mm -hmm. right? To to ask someone to play with like. Amazon with 53, if not Cloudflare, Cloudfront, it's just too complicated. It always, always took me hours because mm -hmm. you can't debug it. There's always one error that you were not even expected. Instructions that only tell you that may be like maybe 30 minutes, maybe three hours that mm -hmm. you don't even know you are not even able to debug. And now we have fully have control of the entire stack that we didn't make uh, many of the, for sure, optimization, but many of the new use cases possible. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, it's very different from INS where mm -hmm. the design left uh, a lot of gaps mm -hmm. uh, with how it works with a normal people's browser. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole global existing DNS uh, naming system. Mm -hmm. uh, here, uh, I think we are uh, finally be able to uh, bridge them together. Mm -hmm. And it's pushing for a new Protocols and standards mm -hmm. that uh, that can be adopted by the registry and register mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to even uh, to to make them more web three and mm -hmm. more more secure and uh, easier for people to operate and manage and uh, uh, transfer their domains. Mm -hmm. and, and, but uh, yeah, it, it's an old fashioned business. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it looks like we can make it uh, a lot cheaper and a lot yeah. faster and a lot more transparent. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll again write out more like documentation as well as uh, some of the like the technical architecture that we set up. But let's also talk about like what's the next few months, if not the roadmap, what are we still busy about, right? What can still be other people will contribute? What are still some of the challenges that uh, even though this is very usable product now, but we'll set up for like years of like foundation, mm -hmm. that the way that we set up both security but also like open platform way of uh, managing domains. Mm -hmm. What kind of things we do we still need to put on chain mm -hmm. so that it's not just about even one developer or one studio and a few people that can uh, hold the asset uh, what, what can be our long-term goal here? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these uh, um, features of the internet that we take for granted mm -hmm. those uh, basic functionalities like email or mm -hmm. connecting with website mm -hmm. uh, or uh, many of those products are being built over the last decade or yeah. two. Uh, those can all be moved on chain and mm -hmm. with a domain system mm -hmm. and a, 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 uh, and a crypto and a whole blockchain system is supported. Mm -hmm. uh, they can all be made a lot mm -hmm. more efficient. Like, I mm -hmm. think starting from email, mm -hmm. uh, starting from uh, mm -hmm. uh, generating websites, mm -hmm. uh, we can do things like a private Email exactly. We can do. Uh, um, we we can make it a lot easier for people to have their own desirable uh, mm -hmm. domain name mm -hmm. following their email, mm -hmm. which uh, these days mo uh, most of the time costs you five dollar per user. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, with Google or somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really agree with your long term view. Uh, when we like get the domain uh, almost a year and a half so ago, like Aaron were already very interested. Uh, uh, the dot country is a really broader concept of digital nation, but the fact that uh, now you can really control end to end what to innovate. What you said, uh, the infrastructure of Web One, right? We will really will quickly bring back what are the social aspect of Web Two. Uh, to this uh, new initiative mm -hmm. to talk about what well, the interactions um, and so on. And then there were three incentives, both the finance and economy. Mm -hmm. The fact that uh, the payments and everything will be possible is a given, right? You come in with a wallet and so on mm -hmm. and showing all the collectives and later on the governance so that you align the community to be part of the country. And I think that's the really the magic here. There's so much technical work to do that we'll unpack it way up as our roadmap. But the fact that um, I, I do think it's both the infrastructure, the finance, 
and the economy, why this uh, new platform, new market that uh, all the Web 1, Web 2, sorry, can be combined. In particular, we always talk about different auctions model. We always talk about different tax and fees model for the domains. So we incentivize, but also sustain some of this uh, development, not only for the next years and buying a few sales forever, but to have a really robust like, community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, probably one uh, of the lifetime opportunity to experiment <laughs> with one, yeah. one of the new ways of yeah. doing things. Yeah, uh, and uh, I'm really glad that, that we put together for the launch, but there's still so much technical uh, like uh, like things to, to unpack. Next time, we really want to jump into an even specific uh, solution that we come up with. That uh, it's just really really fun. Mm -hmm. That uh, like there's still so much innovation, mm -hmm. both like as a crypto project on the Web three space about money and economy and community, mm -hmm. but also like technical product that actually really impact users. Right? When I tell my family and friends that mm -hmm. here's the really amazing like a way to even display a bookmark and collect things forever mm -hmm. they're just really happy about such a like product iteration yes yes it's very easy these days to uh, do something complicated with cryptography mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. complicated blockchain technology and mm -hmm. their knowledge proof but uh, and many people are doing it but it's very rare that we see any uh, products with mm -hmm. utility mm -hmm. end to end uh, mm -hmm. being built mm -hmm. as uh, showing superior performance mm -hmm. than the back to a counterpart. Yeah. And I think that's what's happening here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank mm -hmm. you again, Aaron. Thanks for today's time. Okay. <laughs>